Hi there Lincoln owners, today in your 2020 Lincoln Corsair we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 3 2 inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. The cross tube is hidden behind the bumper so you're just going to see the receiver here and it's tucked up nicely so it really doesn't detract from the looks of the vehicle. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer, and I would recommend getting locking pins to protect your investments. Just behind that, we've got plate style safety chain loops, and they're at a diagonal angle, which makes it a little bit easier to access. The opening is kind of a moderate size opening, but it should be large enough to accommodate most of your safety chains out there. The little one had no problem, and the big one here has no problem as well. This hitch offers a 525 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of the receiver. And that should be enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with four bikes. It's almost large enough for the largest cargo carrier here at eTrailer. It is gonna be a little bit shy of being able to load it up all the way to the max, but you should still be able to get a lot of gear out of your vehicle to free up room for more gear or some more passengers. It also features a 3,500 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that you can pull behind it. And that should be enough if you've got a small pop-up camper you want to bring with you, uh, maybe some small boats, a jet ski. You should be able to do pretty much most of your little things. If you are looking to get a bigger camper or something, you might want to look at a bigger vehicle than this for those larger campers because it's just not going to have enough here on the hitch of the vehicle. Now, as always, I recommend you verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed its towing capacities. Now, I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of the hitch pin hole, to the edge of the rear bumper, we're looking at right at about seven inches. And this is important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper when inserted into the receiver and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're looking at right at about 13 and a half inches. And that's important when determining if you need to drop a rise or a raised shank on your accessories. And this one is getting pretty low, so you might want to consider a raised shank on those accessories. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with us in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. It's fairly simple. We will have to do just a little bit of modification to the bottom of the vehicle to get the hardware in place. So make sure you get yourself a little grind bit or grind wheel available. But it will be over before you know it. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle. Now you don't have to lower down your exhaust, but it's pretty tight and I highly recommend it to make it easier to install. We're going to be lowering ours down. We're going to put a strap in place first underneath the vehicle. And this is just going to catch our exhaust here. And then we can remove the hangers that are holding it in place. On both the passenger and driver's side, you're going to have a bolt where it attaches the hanger to the frame. On the passenger side, you're going to have an additional nut on that bolt. We'll remove that nut with an 11 millimeter socket. You can just slide the wiring off of there, it just kind of slides off. And next we can remove the bolt. For this one, we're going to switch to a 10 millimeter socket. And our exhaust should come down a bit with that. We'll then go over to the other side and we'll take that one loose the same way. And this should be pretty good right here. If you need a little bit more to bring it down, you can just take your strap and loosen it up a bit. And that'll give you a little bit more slack. But that's plenty of room now to be able to slide it in and be able to work here on the frame where we need to be. Next, we're gonna grab an extra set of hands because we need to hold our hitch into position and we need to mark on the bottom of the frame. It is going to line up with pre-existing holes in the frame, but one of them we're going to have to enlarge to allow spacers to pass through, and we also need to enlarge it in a certain direction to make sure that it lines up with our hitch properly. So with our extra set of hands, we're just lifting our hitch into position. I do have a paint stick in my hand, so I can mark the area where we're going to need to trim. And that's pretty much this back area right here. So I'm just marking out on the frame where I need to trim on this side. And we're just gonna head over to this side and mark this side of the frame as well. Then we can just pull our hitch back down 
and we'll have to enlarge the area where we marked to be able to feed our hardware into place. So here you can see the area where our hardware needs to pass through that we marked here. You could grind this out, but it's a quite large area and it take quite some time to grind. So to save some time, I think it's gonna be a lot easier to just cut this section out. So we're gonna make two slits uh, going down forward and backward on the car. And then we're just gonna take this and bend this down. Because after we bend it down, then we can just use our cutoff wheel to cut it off flush with the bottom. Well, we've got her bent down. We'll just take our cutoff wheel now and just trim that right off. That's probably gonna be pretty hot. You don't wanna grab it with your hand. Just grab it with our pliers there and pull that out of the way. And now we can see we've got plenty of area there to be able to feed our hardware up into the frame. It's gonna line up properly with our hitch. If you do have any little rough edges right here, you can just take a hammer and just kind of knock those up to where it's flush against the bottom of the frame. We'll then head over to the other side and we're gonna notch it out the same way. Once you've got each side cut out, you want to make sure that your hardware can easily pass up in there. So your spacers, make sure those can slide up in there easily, as well as the head of your bolts. The head of your bolts are pretty thick, so you may need to take your cutoff wheel a little bit and just kind of hit the edges just a little bit to widen it out just enough to get that bolt to slide up in there like that. And to help prevent against rust and corrosion, we're just going to put a little bit of spray paint on the area where we cut it out. We can now start to get our hardware into position. We're gonna fish wire it. I like to start at the furthest hole from our access hole, so that's the one here at the back. We poked the coil end into that hole, and then we're feeding it towards the front, towards our access hole that we'd enlarge. Sometimes it helps to kind of give a couple of bends in the wire to help angle it down as well. There we go. And there's our coiled end. I do like to take the end here and just put kind of a 90 degree in it. That way if uh, our hardware wants to try to slide through, this kind of catches and helps keep our fish wire from just falling right back through. We'll now take one of the spacers that come in your kit. This is just gonna slide over the coiled end. We're just gonna push that up into the frame. Then we're gonna take a carriage bolt that comes in our kit and this is gonna thread onto our coiled wire. Once we have that threaded on there, we're gonna push the bolt up into the frame and then pull our coiled wire until it pops back down through the hole. We'll then just gonna repeat that procedure for the next hole and then we're gonna do both rear holes on the other side and then I'll show you the reverse fish wire technique to get the piece of hardware in place in the access hole that we had enlarged. So now we're gonna do the reverse fish wire technique for our access hole here. So just take your coiled wire, we're gonna slide your spacer on top, we're gonna to thread your carriage bolt into the coiled end. We can then push the carriage bolt into the frame, slide our spacer up into the frame, and then just pull our bolt until it comes back through. We'll then repeat the same procedures over on the other side to get that hardware installed. And now with the next set of hands, we'll lift our hitch into position. You wanna take your coiled wires, you wanna feed those down through the openings in your hitch that are gonna line up with the appropriate hole that'll match up to the frame. Once you've got them all fed down, you can then lift your hitch up into position. We can then go ahead and remove a coiled wire. 
and get a nut started on one. Be careful not to push your hardware back up into the frame. Once you get one nut started on each side, that'll hold the hitch up, making it easier to install the rest of your hardware. We can then go back with our 19 millimeter socket and tighten down our hardware. And then we can torque all of our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. We can now put our exhaust back into position. So you have to lift it up to line up those hangers. There's a little alignment peg on one side that fits into a hole. And then you can get your bolt in there and get it started. And you really just need to get it hand started. Then we can head over to the other side and get that side started as well. We can then go back and tighten them down with our 10 millimeter socket. And then don't forget over here on the passenger side, you had that wire harness. Slide that wire harness clip back in place and reinstall the nut. With our exhaust back in place, we don't need our strap here anymore, so we can take that off and get that set aside. And now at this point, we're ready to load up our hitch with our favorite accessories and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Kurt's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Lincoln Corsair.